This week, I am in Yellowstone National Park, the United States' oldest and most renowned national park. It is known for its wildlife, size, and volcanic activity, the last of which I will be touching on today. I am in front of the Grand Prismatic Spring in Yellowstone National Park. Unfortunately, as you can probably see, it is extremely foggy. Uh, this is because currently it is about 30 degrees here, minus one or two centigrade. Uh, that means that the vapor pressure of the water is extremely low, while the heat released by the hot spring maintains the same temperature meaning that we get more steam. Luckily, I got some shots yesterday. Hopefully you can bear with me. If some of the shots don't look snowy, that's because I did it the other day. Enjoy the video. This hot spring is more than 300 feet across and more than 160 feet deep, making it the third largest hot spring in the world. This gargantuan pool expels some 560 gallons of water every minute, or more than 806,000 gallons of water every day. That's more than enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool every 20 hours. But this is not what makes this pool special. Not the size or the shape or how quickly it sheds water. What makes this pool special is the color. While on colder days like today, it is a bit too foggy to see, in person, it is truly magnificent. This pool was discovered by Americans in 1871 and was named the Grand Prismatic Spring after the impressive hues that resembled the rainbow that a prism created. The leader of the expedition that discovered this pool, Ferdinand Hayden, wrote on the spring saying, quote, nothing ever conceived by human art could equal the particular vividness and delicacy of color in these remarkable prismatic springs. Life becomes a privilege and a blessing after one has seen and thoroughly felt these incomparable types of nature's cunning steel. It is truly magnificent see in person. I'd venture to say it is nigh unimpossible to capture the true glory of such a place. Excuse me if I nerd out a little, but some things in nature just demand such grand appreciation. The natural question this brings is why is it colored this way? Well, the core is easy to explain. The clear, deep blue water is just that, water. The temperature of the water reaches nearly 190 degrees in places as a result of nearby volcanic activity. The extreme temperatures keeps the center of the pool sterile from even the most resilient bacteria. But that isn't to speak of the greens and yellows of the edges, nor the oranges and reds of the runoff. How do they get their color? The key to understanding these shades is positively microscopic. The first pigment we see is yellow, from the bacteria Syncococcus. This bacteria is super resilient to heat. It is able to withstand temperatures in excess of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This type of bacteria is autotrophic. Specifically, it is a photosynthesizing type of bacteria that uses chlorophyll pigments to gain energy from sunlight. However, 
this species is highly susceptible to ultraviolet radiation. So, when sunlight is most intense in the summer, it produces more pigments known as carotenoids. Actually, the same ones we see in carrots. They just appear yellow as a result of other chemicals found in the bacteria. From there, the red, rusty color comes from a species of bacteria known as chloroflexi, which can occupy cooler regions of about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. These have different types of chlorophyll and carotenoids, rending them a darker red. But what about the in-between colors, orange and green? Well, they are simply a mix of colors. The yellow with the natural blue is the inner green ring. And if you mix the yellow Synchococcus with the red Chloroflexi, you get the more diverse orange. I find this mix of microbiomes absolutely fascinating. It is truly incredible that what is essentially a boiling pit of water has formed into a diverse rainbow of some of the most unique bacteria that the world has to offer. All this through nothing more than the science of evolution. Thank you so much for watching. It is really cold out here, so I'm gonna let future Eric take it from here. Hello. Thank you so much for watching. This is more of an experimental type of video. I hope you liked it. Let me know. I'm obviously trying out something new with the travel, but also trying something out new with the setup. I got a whole new microphone set up and actually I'm using a teleprompter. So hopefully you noticed that there were less jump cuts in between takes. Anyway, if you enjoyed, leave a like on the video, subscribe to my channel, you know what to do. Anyway, I will hit you with the lesson three and I will see you